hello everyone. It's nice to virtually meet you on the occasion of the researchers' night. Uh, where shall I start? Um, I'm probably not delivering the shockingly new information if I'm if I'm saying that we are living in the age of multiple crises and and risky times. COVID nineteen pandemia, healthcare crisis, economic hardship shape the world. Uh, and turn our life upside down. And we experience extremities in our social conditions, uh, personal situation, and inner moods. So it's, it's a burdensome time with emotional highs and lows. And today I would like to talk about one of particular emotion. This is nostalgia. And it is extremely relevant in this crisis context because with the difficulties of the present moment and uncertain future ahead of us, the past has never looked better, some say. And it is even argued that societal pessimism is increasing amongst the waters all over Europe. Studies in psychology show that when people feel anxious or challenged in life, they recall happy memories. Why? To comfort themselves. Of course, we don't have um, we don't have the ability to to physically travel back to the ages of what we prefer, but some mental time travel to the imagined good old times it's absolutely possible. So nostalgia can be considered as a, as a coping strategy for millions in uncomfortable times uh, and uncertain situations. Yeah, it's, it's hard to tell whether nostalgia is a good thing or a bad thing or the sentimental longing for the past is a desirable or a harmful phenomenon. Some theorists tend to think that nostalgia is a pathological um, state of mind leading to depression or preventing the individuals or the collective from, from making progresses. Other researchers, um, other researchers show that Feeling nostalgic sometimes inspire, motivate people to overcome difficulties and mobilize inner strengths by increasing self-esteem. And it can be relevant for a group of people. It can be relevant for a collective, for uplifting the collective mood. Nostalgia also has a, a visionary aspect, despite it being oriented in the past rather than the future. Nostalgia provides something to people to cling on to and promises to restore the glory of the past day, so to speak. Nostalgia, therefore, a rather ambiguous concept, rather uh, ambiguous term. Nostalgia can have both a positive and a negative connotation, but does nostalgia have anything to do with politics? My answer is yes, and I will use the next couple of minutes to try to convince you if you think it otherwise. It's easy to, to find several signs of yearning for the past in politics. Nostalgic components um, uh, surely appeared in the political communication. Just, just think about um, the Brexit campaign. Just to think, think about the slogan of the Leave campaign, take back control, suggesting that there used to be a time when the Britons had the control which control lost somewhere sometimes, and uh, they claim to get it back. And remember Donald Trump's discursive trademark, Make America Great Again, proposing that there was a time when America was great and such greatness lost. And uh, Trump um, claimed that he can or he could bring that greatness back in this present time of the United States. The Hungarian right-wing politics wants to return to times when traditional gender roles and gender norms dominated the culture and societies. Also, the Prime Minister Viktor Orban usually criticizes the European leaders that they turned in the wrong direction and they should go back to the legacy of François Mitterrand and Helmut Kohl. Um, but okay, these are only a couple of anecdotal evidence relying on my impression, you can rightly say. So with my colleague Balash Kish, I conducted a study to estimate 
the volume, the frequency of nostalgic messages in political communication and social networking site in Hungary. More precisely, we want to answer two specific questions. What kind of nostalgia were present um, and to what extent in Hungarian political leaders' Facebook uh, messages during the European parliamentary election? And in what ways uh, Facebook users reacted to such, uh, such retrospective messages of the political leaders? And this study understands nostalgia as an emotion which uh, is longing for the past that is argued to be better, uh, more beautiful, more familiar, more glorious than the present. So it's a mixed and a complex emotion, and, and such emotion became an attribute of populism in the international literature. So that's, that's the way how it is connected to our, our topic and how it is connected to this Horizon 2020 project. Populist forces are often labeled and described as reactionary parties, which combine uh, resentful expressions and desire to return to the past condition in their rhetoric especially during the election campaigns. To study nostalgia, we defined different aspects of retrospective communication, different types, different uh, um, components. Backward looking messages can be personal if the communicator turned towards an earlier period of their life. Uh, for example, they refer a nice childhood memory um, in other cases, longing is targeted at the period before the communicator birth, and it is called historical nostalgia. They can remember um, the Hungarian Revolution uh, or the French Revolution or whatever before their birth. In several situations, the political leaders recall for the direct restoration of the past. This is the restorative nostalgia, which seeks to rebuild the condition of the past. While with the aid of the so-called reflective nostalgia, the communicator recalls the, the past to learn from the previous uh, experiences and, and past time. Uh, global nostalgia, that's, that's another aspect, that's another component. So global nostalgia is a well-known communicative practice when politicians propose to long for the past period as a wall, like a Kadar era. Politicians might say that Kadar era, um, in general, it was a good condition for the working class and we should bring it back in this uh, present time. Um, while specific nostalgia offers a return to certain aspects of the previous ages. Let's take the, the similar um, example. Politicians may say that the full employment of the Kadar era was a good thing, was a fruitful thing. So we should uh, design or um, welfare policies or economic policies um, in accordance with uh, the Kadar era's full employment um, practices. And of course, the literature defines many more aspects of nostalgia, which I cannot list now, but if you are interested in, in more detailed insights, please feel free to contact me. I can send you a paper on that topic uh, for detailed explanation. But to explain how it is working in a, in a real life situation, how these coding category work in our um, in our analysis, let me take an example of Laszlo Torotskai. Um, Laszlo Torotska is a leader of a far-right party called Mihazang or Homeland. That's a, that's a minor party with three members of the parliament, which gives the, the party and the leader some, some nationwide visibility. And Laszlo Torotska himself is a mayor of a small village near, near the Serbian border called Ashut Halom. And um, he is in the picture you can see on the slide. Uh, Laszlo Torotska is famous for his law and order stances and being extremely harsh on, on pit petty crimes like shoplifting and offenses of damages. And on the slide, you can see a picture and a quotation from the Facebook page of Laszlo Torotska, which was posted on the occasion of erecting a pillory. Um, and 
you probably recognize that there is a pillory behind the, the politicians in the picture. And pillory is a medieval punishment device. And um, Lesa Torovsky uh, placed a replica of that pillory in the center of the small village um, um, he, he ruled last year. It happened last year. And this message clearly shows some nostalgic components since uh, Laszlo Torecki claims visually and, and verbally that punishment in the past ages worked far better than as it is now, and it should be remembered positively, and it should be restored. And in our classification, that's the case of historical, restorative, and specific retrospective message. I'm terribly sorry, but I must bore you with some, some methodological and, and technical details, but I, I shall be very quick on that. Our data is coming from the political leader's Facebook profile. We focus on the European parliamentary election campaign period, and all in all, we scrutinize more than 900 posts, which, which is a lot, and we divided our sample into two uh, sub-samples, First, we selected those messages which contains any elements of nostalgia, discursive nostalgia. And in this subsample, we proceeded a qualitative content analysis to identify different aspects of backward looking uh, communication. And we were also interested in a way how Facebook users reacted to such communication. Therefore, we measured the numbers of users' reactions, such as comments, the number of comments, shares, emoji responses, the nostalgia offered by the political leaders. Okay, what are the results? Our data suggests that only 3% of the total number of messages can be labeled as nostalgic communication. That's a rather surprising and counterintuitive um, I must say, since Hungary is a textbook case of populism in the literature of political science. So we assumed that we, uh, we would see more populist, more uh, nostalgic communication. So theoretically, Hungary should provide more examples of backward looking political communication during the campaign. So that's why I said it's very contraintuitive. But what is consistent with the literature is the connection between the political leaning and, and, the, and the expressed nostalgia. Right-wing political actors such as Viktor Orban and Laszlo Torotsky posted nostalgia the most frequently. But left-leaning politicians, especially Fekete Győr András and Gergely Karácsony Gergely and uh, uh, Jócsány Ferenc, also used nostalgic elements in their campaign communication, but in a significantly lesser extent. Concerning the characteristics of the nostalgic messages, we found that mostly reflective and specific nostalgia dominated the discourses. Personal and historical reflections were also shared on the Facebook. Interestingly enough, certain persons are remembered positively and wish to be more influential on the current political situation. Um, Helmut Kohl, for example, turning back to the legacy of Helmut Kohl and Arpad Guns was, was mentioned during the European parliamentary campaign. Of course, Helmut Kohl recalled fondly by Orban, uh, Viktor Orban and Guns Arpad, um, remembered positively and wished to uh, have more politicians like uh, Gönc Harpad by, um, by uh, Karácsony Gergely and uh, Gyurcsány Ferenc. Some values were also connected to the past and longingly desired uh, to bring back to the present and the future politics, such as stamina, loyalty, heroism, uh, camaraderie, and so on and so forth. Another important dimension of, of social networking side is the, is the interactivity. Facebook allows and, uh, and encourages users to respond to the politicians' um, messages 
by, by liking, commenting, sharing, leaving emoji responses. And that's why our investigation includes an analysis on the user's reaction to nostalgia. And data say that backward-looking rhetoric is not particularly success, um, successful on Facebook in attracting users' reaction in comparison with the average number of comments, shares, and emotive reaction um, in our world sample. But nuances must be noted. Positive emojis slightly expanded when it comes to personal nostalgia. It seems that Facebook users reward politicians for sharing his, her personal messages or personal memories with nostalgic appeals by giving them likes and, and loves and other positive emotions. Um, so it's, it's a rewarding thing for a politician to post um, uh, personal memories uh, with, with nostalgic um, emotive um, uh, aspects. While more angry and sad emojis were registered under the nostalgic post of Laszlo Torotsky, the increase of negative emotions can be interpreted as a signal that backward-looking communication triggers more anger and sadness than other topics in the case of last week's And to conclude, our results suggest that nostalgia exists in the Algerian politics, but it was not the dominant pattern uh, during the, the European parliamentary campaign last year. It might be more relevant today, or it could be relevant, with, or it can be relevant in the future, we will see. But our results clearly demonstrate that it was not the most important emotional narrative during the European parliamentary election. Our Facebook study also shows that rest, retrospective messages are not particularly attractive for social media users, but they do not totally reject nostalgia. So they have a kind of uh, interest in seeing, and liking, and commenting um, nostalgic messages, but they are not super excited about that. So the main actors of the political communication in Hungary are responsive to nostalgia, but our results somewhat mitigate the concerns of the, of the overwhelmed nostalgic feelings or um, the, the, the spread uh, of, of nostalgic messages, backward-looking rhetoric in Hungary. So sharing nostalgia is, a, is definitely a political activity here in Hungary, but, but not the, the most dominant one. At least this is what our data says. And having said that, I thank you very much for your attention, and I'm happy to take questions or comments if you have any. Thank you very much.